Hello everybody and welcome back to Ham Clan. It's year four, baby, and the clan is still growing. Maybe a little too much? Okay, definitely a little too much. There's a lot of meow meows in the clan right now, and it's a lot of drawing to do. Luckily, I got a head start on their sketches and bonus drawings while making year three of Rebel Clan, so hooray! Also, another set of good news, I finally, finally made a family tree for Hound Clan. It will be linked in the description. It should be fully updated by the time that I upload this video. I used Mornstar as a base to add cats, and I will adjust the tree when anything changes. They're not all related to Mornstar, I promise. This isn't Thunder Clan. That was just the best way to do the family tree. Also, random question for those of you who use the family tree. Do you want me to make it so the cats who have died have their Star Clan photos? Or do you want their alive photos and for the text under the photos to say whether they're alive or dead? Because if they're dead, their names are grayed out. So right now I have the Star Clan photos for the dead cats, but if you want me to use living cat photos, let me know. Also, also, there will be a family tree for Rubble Clan, but I will be keeping that to myself until the next year comes out for them so that they can be fully updated as well. So look out for that! Without further ado, let's start with the sad part of these videos and see the new cats in Star Clan. The first cat to die this year was a cat that you guys didn't meet, named Grizabella. The clan saved him from a cruel two-leg who was trying to drown him, but unfortunately the head damage kept them in the medicine den for most of their time here. Eventually it did heal, but he was found dead on the territory in that same moon. So I'm thinking either the injury really wasn't as healed as everyone had hoped, or maybe the stress of such a situation just got to him. Either way, the clan did like him in his stories while he was around, and he will be missed, even if he was only a member for a short time. Our next death is one of our elders and founders, Partridge Snap. He didn't do much this year, unfortunately, spending most of his time in the elders' den. He was worrying about Sorrel back this year, as the cat was still very anxious. The last status he got before his death was that he wanted to go on a little jaunt outside, and then... He was attacked and killed by a fox. I don't suspect foul play, I genuinely think poor Partridge Snap just got unlucky. He will be dearly missed. Civet Stripe sat all night at his vigil, and Fudge was absolutely heartbroken. In Star Clan, he has been sad to leave the clan behind, but was happy to reunite with old friends. He's been watching the clan with affection and walking in Dove Prance's dreams as well. I like to think he also traveled over to Rebel Clan to greet both Dash Nudge and Cypress Scores, old members of Hound Clan, in their dreams. I'll miss this old elder, and I'm sad he had to die in such a rough way, but at least he can relax in Star Clan now. And unfortunately, in the very same moon, the next cat to die was Sorrel back. I'm so upset! Why did we have to lose the cat with the pants? His year was alright. He was still a pretty nervous wreck, but he was starting to make good friends in Hayflood, Ficklefeather, Billow Howl, and a few others. He even started to get a sassy side to him, which was definitely a Civet Stripe family trait. But unfortunately, he and Hayflood found a coyote on patrol and it killed Sorrel back before he could escape. My heart hurts for this poor guy. He was so anxious for all of his life and he died in such an awful way. In Star Clan, he has been able to relax a little bit and has been getting along with a lot of cats, but he's still sad. He misses his family and he worries about them a lot. Especially Sapling Crest for what she's going through, but we'll talk about that more later. Our next death was a kit that you guys didn't get to meet. Little Petal Kit. She was daring and a picky nest builder and only died at five moons old. You may be wondering, who were her parents? Well, Conquer Skip decided to be a bad kitty and brought five kits back to camp, including Petal Kit. Really, Conquer Skip? You're the deputy! Come on! There are already too many cats in this clan. I could only draw so many cats. Her life was short, but she was quite the character. She tried to sneak out of camp with a patrol and hated being babied by everyone but Conquer Skip. She wanted to grow up to be a big warrior, but unfortunately, she caught Kitten Cough and succumbed to it only a few moons later. The clan was heartbroken. This was the first kit death since Ploverwing, who was Conquer Skip's sister. In Star Clan, she has mostly been watching over her family and trying to become an apprentice. I really wish she could have grown up with her siblings. I can only imagine how wild she would have been when she was already trying to sneak out of camp. She will be missed. And our last death this year is, unfortunately, Dove Prance, and I'm heartbroken. I loved this sweet old lady and her wife so much. She was having a pretty good year, too. She did get heat exhaustion at one point, but she was still doing great in her mediator duties. She negotiated with a kitty pet to use herbs in their garden. I like to imagine maybe giving them a fish or another piece of prey and being like, look, you can try cool food if you give us your herbs. She also traveled over to the other clans to settle disputes and help settle arguing kits, which I think she always found amusing. She got to see her two younger kits grow up, 
and spent most of the year beside her mate. Unfortunately, she died from a heart attack right at the end of the year. I think she may have known she was going to die soon, though, because she was visited by partridge snaps in her dreams right before her death. She hasn't done much in Starclan yet, but I think she was happy to reunite with all the other elders, including you, Spots, Partridge Snaps, and many other long-lost clanmates. She misses her family deeply, especially if she watches them mourn for her. She wishes she could have seen her kits become warriors, and wishes she could have repaired her relationship with Beamfog, but she's trying not to let these regrets hold her back from watching over them. As much as it hurts to not be there, at least she can support them from Starclan. Those are, thankfully, all the deaths this year, but they all really hurt. Especially Dove Prince and Petal Kit. The Kit deaths always suck, and Dove was a clan founder. I'll miss all these cats so much, but at least the Star Clan section is over. So let's move on to the living cats. But we're not going to the clan just yet, because... Acacia was kidnapped by two legs early into the beginning of the year. She was able to protect her apprentice Greenpaw, but at the cost of her getting caught and taken away on a two-leg monster. There's not much more to say about her, unfortunately, because her statuses have just been very sad. Worrying about her mate, clanmates, and hoping the clan's kits are doing well. I think she escaped pretty quick because she's been wandering around and did think she saw Ficklefeather at the end of the year. So I'm hoping that means she's close to home, but only time will tell. With that unfortunate kidnapping out of the way, now we can move into the clan. Starting with Furstar and her two mates, Willowthrift and Weedpelt. They all had a pretty good year, except towards the end. To start with, she and Willowthrift had a litter of two beautiful kits, Cherry Kit and Coco Kit, who we will talk about later. Then, of course, Weedpelt confessed to Furstar and they became a polycule. I find it funny that both Hound Clan and Rebel Clan's leaders are ladies in love-filled polycules. Furstar has been a busy cat this year and she's enjoyed the year a lot. She started off a little exhausted, she was feeling down and leaving conversations when things were brought up that she'd rather forget. I think this may have had to do with her new kits, because last time she had kits was with Tadpole Stripe, who died before he got to watch them grow up. First Star doesn't want the same thing to happen to her new kits. Thankfully, her mates encouraged her and were there to help her through nightmares. She also found happiness in making several cats warriors this year, as well as having many successful patrols. She was batting at sunlight, which I thought was adorable, and she even took on a gang of rogues all by herself without losing a single life. She's also expecting another litter at the end of the year, but has come down with yellow cough as well. She's trying to stay optimistic, even as she's very worried. She doesn't want anyone else to get sick, and she especially doesn't want to lose her litter due to this illness. But only time will tell if she recovers from it. As for Willow Thrift, he was very chipper this year too. He had a litter with his mate and was very happy to be a father again. He's also been really enjoying a life as an elder. I think his dark forest dreams have settled somewhat, which is letting him rest a lot better. He's starting to show a bit of a playful side to himself as well. He has been sharing silly advice with the younger cats and has been pranking back and forth with Zara. He still helps around camp by assigning camp cleanup and directing apprentices every now and then, but is just happy to sit around and tell stories too. He did catch White Cough, but thankfully recovered quickly. He is very worried right now though because of First Star's condition, and is a bit worried that he might have passed the illness on to her. And although I did draw him next to her, I think he hasn't been able to see her in a bit and has been ordered to the Elder's Den. Because of his age and the fact he was sick just a few moons ago, they don't want to take any chances. He understands, and he trusts them all to take care of her, but that doesn't stop him from worrying. Weed Pelt, meanwhile, is still kind of a bundle of nerves. He is very talented at gathering herbs and knows a lot of healing techniques, but still has a lot of doubt in his own abilities. But, on a patrol, he was visited by a Star Clan cat that I like to think was Burnet Shade, who encouraged him to put himself out there and be more brave. This led to him being brave enough to confess to First Star. The moon before that, his status was that he went on a long walk, deep in thought. So I like to imagine he was psyching himself up for like a month before he managed to do it. But right now, just like Willow Thrift, he is extremely worried about First Star and their kits. Although First Star is being positive, he's terrified. Especially because in the last moon of the year, on a patrol, he heard odd sounds and found a queen in their kits dead and cold on the territory. That was heartbreaking enough, but he's also extremely worried that it might be an omen of the future, which is why he quarantined First Star, sent Willow Thrift away, and has been watching over her mostly on his own. The other medicine cats force him to rest, but even his dreams are filled with fear of the future. I'm really worried about these three, especially First Star. I know she has nine lives, but she's also carrying a litter. I'm hoping Year 5 will start with a healthy litter and no more yellow cough, but like I said above, only time will tell. 
Next up is our deputy, Conker Skip, and their mate, Root Climb. These two are also expecting Kitch, which is exciting, but of course, as I mentioned above, this won't be Conker Skip's first litter because they decided to come back to the clan with five kits! Once again, Conker Skip, you're the deputy! The game says the kits are outsider roots, so I think it was definitely a fling of some kind. I think that the reason they had this fling is probably from the stress early this year of becoming deputy. They're very good at the job, but unfortunately, Mist Clan has been very hostile this year, yowling and jeering at patrols. Conker Skip manages to keep their clanmates calm in the face of this, but it really gets to them after all they've been through. Root Climb was the first to learn about the kits and honestly has been Conker Skip's rock this year, especially after Petal Kit's sudden death. Conker Skip was heartbroken and couldn't help but think of their younger sister, Cloverwing, who died right around the same age. But with Root Climb, Billow Howl, and their kits by their side, they're finding life a little bit easier to bear. They're also expecting kits with Root Climb, which surprised me. I thought that six was enough, but the game said no. Either way, I'm glad that Conker Skip is able to smile at the end of the year, and I hope it'll be better for them next year as well. As for Root Climb, he's had a good year. He was seen touching noses with the rogue at the end of the year, but considering he's a cat with outsider roots, I like to think that maybe it's a cat he's related to and found them in a nearby territory. He was wanting to spend a lot of time alone, which is what led him to being the one to find his crush, Conker Skip, struggling to carry five young kits back to camp. Root Climb didn't ask any questions, just helped take them to camp, and that's where their love truly blossomed. He cares for the kits as if they were his own, and they really look up to him. He's been enjoying sunbathing, had flirtatious patrols with Conker Skip, and even got their first apprentice in Cherry Paw. The apprentice keeps him on his toes, but he enjoys the challenge. Losing Petal Kit was hard on him too, considering he raised the kit alongside her parent, and at one point they nearly broke up because of Conker Skip's fear that everyone around them is going to get hurt. Root Climb was firm that he isn't going anywhere, they'll always be there for each other. He's always been there for his mate, just as he knows Conker Skip will be there for him. Now they're expecting kits! It's just a small litter, but Root Climb is very excited to have a chance to grow a family with the cat he's loved for so, so long. Moving on to the medicine cats, we're starting with Flower Patch, who's really not doing good right now. The loss of her mate has left her heartbroken and lost. Despite all the hardships they faced, she and Dove Prince were truly soulmates and loved each other so, so much. They had such a happy year watching their kids grow up, and Flower Patch even got an apprentice this year as well. She was a little worried about them despite their talent, but her focus on that was lost at the sudden loss of her mate. I think Dove Prince did tell her that she knew she was going to die soon due to Partridge Snap's visit, but Flower Patch didn't want to believe it. It wasn't just denial, it was also fear. Flower Patch still holds a lot of internal self-loathing for her own actions when she was a follower of Hush Star. There's a big part of her that is terrified that she will not be allowed into Star Clan and that she'll never see the cat she loves again. Right now, she's grieving for her mate as the scent of Dove Prince fades from their shared nest, and she can't focus on anything beyond that. Daisy Spike is next, and right now is sort of working as the head medicine cat to allow Flower Patch time to grieve. He did the same when she was in the nursery with her kits, so this isn't his first rodeo. He has been doing checkups on the kits, though. He has been a bit cross with a few troubled nakers who like to sneak into the medicine den. He also met with the Star Clan cat as well, who I imagine was his half-brother Swamp Dusk, or maybe Brown Rapid. Considering that Root Climb, his son, is now mates with Conker Skip, he absolutely doted on those surprise kits. They see him as their adoptive grandpa and love him. Yellow Kit even gave him the laurels he now wears. Beyond that, he hasn't done much. He's still troublesome, but far less chaotic about it than Plumeria. He was gathering Lungward at the end of the year, so I think he's the one helping Weed Pelt with most of the taking care of their leader in between his own duties. He is happy to help, happier to watch his son start a family all of his own. As for that apprentice, well, he's been doing his best to keep an eye on them for reasons. Tiger Sore, Katie, and Sporefrost are next, and these three also have become mates. Well, Katie and Tigersaur already were, but Sporefrost has joined! Polycule time, baby! Starting with Tigersaur, he's had a pretty busy year. He's been gathering a lot of herbs and also constantly chasing kits out of his den, including his new little siblings. Surprisingly, he's also been of a prankster himself this year. He's been wishing that he could have kits too, which is something that Katie has also been wishing for, so they've been broaching the topic this year and are thinking of maybe starting a family soon. He's been a bit distracted recently by Star Clan too, talking with cats on patrol, and apparently Twigleaf wanted to warn him about something, which is worrying. He's also ended this year a bit worried about his mother, of course, especially with her yellow cough. And while he trusts Weed Pelt to take care of her, he still tends to search and bring herbs and moths to the entrance of the cave whenever he can. 
He also has fallen hard for Sporefrost, especially after the cat asked him about Starkland and seemed actually interested, which he was pleased about. I really love that this lonely little kitty actually has two mates who are always happy to learn about the things he loves. As for Sporefrost, he was a bit of the mess at the beginning of this year. He caught a rabbit on Root Clan territory and was caught by one of the patrols. It was only thanks to Buckstride's quick talking that they smoothed things over. Thankfully, he was able to redeem his mistake by chasing off a fox and bringing back a deer for the clan. He actually almost got lost near some two-leg nests, so I think he's been helping his brother search for acacia. But this has still been in vain. He's tried to talk his brother into resting, but Golden Stripe just snaps at him, saying that Acacia is probably looking for him and he won't stop until he finds her. Eventually, Sporefrost had to pull away because of how aggressive and angry Golden Stripe was. Despite being an adventurous cat himself, Sporefrost really worries that this wandering may make him lose his brother too if Golden Stripe goes too far away. He eventually had to stop helping even more as he gained his first apprentice, Elmpaw. The young cat absolutely could tell he was crushing and was quite a wing cat for him, which helped him finally admit his feelings. I think their relationship is really cute because he would babysit Elmkit all the time, giving them badger rides and dying theatrically during their games. He actually really seems to love kits, as he was also giving badger rides to Conquer Skip's litter too. I think he's very excited at the prospect of starting a family. He doesn't even mind if the kits aren't biologically his, he just wants to raise a lovely litter with his two amazing mates. Katie has also had a very productive year. There has strangely been a lot of gossip recently about his kitty pet past, but he has been steadfast in ignoring it. He knows he doesn't have to prove himself to anyone. Instead, he's been focused on leading patrols and is very good at it. He led a very successful fishing session, which, again, is absolutely adorable because Tigersaur's favorite prey is fish. I think Sporefrost finds the taste of fish weird, and Katie's always down to track down some voles for Sporefrost instead. He was on a patrol that got ambushed by rogues and fought them off along with the rest of his clanmates, including First Star. He chased off a few other rogues as well as played some pranks on apprentices who always got him back. Unfortunately, the end of the year ended with his tail getting pretty badly injured by a dog. He hates that it happened, mainly because he knows it worries his mates even more, especially with the family issues they're both dealing with. He's done his best to insist that he's fine and he'll recover quickly, and he hopes he does, especially now that having a family is something they all want to do. He can't wait to be back on his paws and, hopefully in the near future, have kits to spoil rotten. Next up is the new medicine cat apprentice, Shivering Paw. This young kit was adopted by Buckstride, who was a little more than choked up by how much Shivering Kit looked like his brother Swamp Dusk. Unfortunately, unlike Swamp Dusk, Shivering Kit has always been a bit... Abrasive, I might say? His very first status was saying that kitty pets can't be warriors. The other kids didn't like him very much, and he got into trouble for bringing thorns into the nest several times. I can't really blame the kids for the way they acted, because he would tease them all day without mercy. He even did that to some older cats. He decided to become a medicine cat, not because of any desire to help, but instead because of the stories he was told and the status it gave. He wants to be important, more important than other cats. On his first patrol, he was more proud of climbing trees super high than gathering elder leaves. He did make a rival in Cherry Paw eventually, and both of them have even competed to see who could gather herbs the fastest, but that's about it when it comes to the friendship category, except for, like, cats and his family. But that's not the only thing. Even as a medicine cat, one of the three higher statuses in the clan, he believes he's meant for something greater. Which is where I reveal that Shivering Paw has been training in the Dark Forest, specifically with his adoptive grandfather, Berlioz. Berlioz played into his pride in yearning to be important, claiming to be a guide for Shivering Paw, and that other cats in the clan can't know about it. Shivering Paw is excited to be special and hasn't told a soul. I think this is also why Flower Patch couldn't make sense of a vision that Shivering Paw had, because it was the Dark Forest speaking to him, not Star Clan. He wants desperately to prove how special he is and genuinely believes that Berlioz can help him with that. And so unfortunately, I think if anyone even found out that their warnings would fall on deaf ears, I'm really worried about him. On that terrifying note, we're moving on to the Warriors now, starting with some new faces. Danger Pelt is a very new arrival, like new new. He was a rogue who lived on his own territory until he was chased out and decided to join Hound Clan, changing his name to a more clan-like name. I love his name so much, because I feel like his name couldn't have just been Danger before this, so I think he chose Danger Pelt because it sounded cool, instead of it actually being his old name. He's only been around for a moon, so he hasn't done much yet, except for catch a rabbit on the other side of the Mist Clan border. 
He was super proud of himself, but the two apprentices on the same patrol were absolutely shocked at such obvious code breaking. Conker Skip, who was also on that patrol, took him aside after and explained the rules a bit more to him. He's a little embarrassed, but he's confident that once he learns all the rules, he'll be the best cat the clan could ask for. Oh, and he didn't give the rabbit back. Finders keepers! <laughs> Comfrey Fluff is another new arrival, a thoughtful older cat. The way the patrol found her was that she was being drowned by a cruel two-leg, but her in-game backstory says her former territory was washed away in a flood. So lore-wise, I'm saying she was washed down the river in a flood, and a Hound Clan patrol was able to save her and bring her to shore. She happily joined the clan, although partly because her head damage meant it would be dangerous to go off alone anyways. She hasn't done much yet because she's been very injured, but what I found really sweet is that she's trying to set a good example for young cats already. I like to imagine that whenever nosy kits come in to stare at her, she gets to them to settle down with fun stories with little lessons hidden in them. Beyond that, the only other status she had is stressing over possible disasters. I think she's worrying that she may have finally found a new home and she doesn't want to lose it like she lost her last one in the flood. She hasn't spoken these worries out loud though, she just hopes she can heal up and give back to the cats who saved her. I hope she recovers. She seems like a sweet old lady who always has those strawberry candies in her bag and I want her to stick around. Alder Call and Ragged are next and these two old cats have become mates. I'm so happy for them. Ragged has continued to be an awesome old man, telling stories on patrols to keep cats entertained and being absolutely adorable with his two kiddos, grooming them for just so long before their apprentice ceremony. He was eavesdropping on Golden Stripe, which I'm taking to mean that he overheard Sporefrost and Golden Stripe's argument. I think, considering he lost his first mate as well, he's tried to give Golden Stripe some gentle intervention, which the young cat hasn't taken well. He and Alder Call have also been absolutely adorable, sunning themselves together in play fighting. He was so proud to watch his kits become warriors, cheering their names the loudest. He was very worried when Alder Call got injured by a fox, and later when Brindle Growl also got injured. I think he was having bad memories of his first mate's death and just the tragedy he's faced in general. They both insist that they're fine, but Ragged still has trouble believing that after everything he's been through. At their insistence, he did focus on his first apprentice, Sleekpaw, to get rid of those worries. It's definitely working at least a little bit because the nervous apprentice reminds him a lot of his own two kiddos who are very similar, and so he's currently either spending his time with his apprentice or his family and kind of worrying about both all at the same time. As for Alter Call, she hasn't lost her sense of adventure, disappearing for days to explore the territory and then returning with plenty of stories. Despite her tendency to run off, she does try to set a good example for younger cats and is always down to tell some stories. She's also come off as lazy to some of her clanmates, and by clanmates I mean Hornet Dusk, who tried to criticize her on patrol once only for her to smack a mouse down without even looking, and then go on to catch even more. She absolutely adores Ragged just as much as he loves her, and is one of the few cats who will purr at his lame dad jokes. She loves his two kits like her own, helping Jumble Kit learn the territory while he did, and is always willing to comfort them or even wander the territory with them when they just need a breather. She did get a nasty bite from a fox, like I mentioned before, and has done her best to keep Ragged calm. She hates seeing that terrified look on his face and wants him to know that she'll be okay, and so will Brindle Growl. She was so relieved when she healed. She hates being cooped up too long and went right back to hunting. She thinks she's one of the best hunters in the clan, and honestly, she might be right. I'm excited to see more of these two old kitties, and I know the clan is already way too big, but I want to see some older ragged babies. Furs is another new arrival to the clan. She was a loner until a Star Clan cat appeared and led her to the clan, which led her to asking to join. On her first patrol, she helped chase away a small dog with Conquer Skip by yowling and screaming at it until it ran away, and also helped catch a bunch of squirrels, encouraging another cat's plan. She hasn't done much else yet, as she's only been around for a few moons, but she seems to be a friendly and supportive cat. One of those friends who's always down to do just about anything, from mundane tasks to crazy adventures. However, she has also been spotted wandering off for a few days and coming back to meet with a cat who I think she may be in love with. Maybe a mate she left behind, or a cat who wouldn't come with her but still wants to see her? I'm not sure. But hopefully we'll see what this crazy-haired kitty is up to next year. Hornet Dusk and Zara are next, and this year they became mates. And I know I drew Zara first, but we have to start with Hornet Dusk for just a second. Hey Hornet Dusk, buddy, pal, can you tell me why you tried to confess to Fudge two moons in a row while she was mourning her daughter? Excuse me? What made you think that was okay? Obviously they got rejected, but goodness gracious! 
Okay, we can talk about Zara now. I just had to start with that because of the sheer audacity. Zara has had a great year so far. She caught a rabbit on one of her first patrols that, despite having tremors, did not turn out to be poisoned. Whew. She loves listening to the stories of older clan cats and is very curious about Star Clan, wondering what the prophecy of the medicine cats may have heard. She's also a prankster, but they're never mean-spirited. She's just a sweet girl with a very bold way of showing it. Because of this, she was the one to confess to a surprised hornet dusk. I was surprised too. I at first didn't understand what she saw in them, but I think I figured it out. More on that in a second. I think she's always wanted to start a family, as when she's not on patrol, she's helping make sure the nursery is secure, and even helped encourage the nervous sleep kit and made sure he knew he was safe. Near the end of the year, they even had a litter of their own. Rosemary Kit, Lily Kit, Tangle Kit, and Sprout Kit. Going back to Hornet Dusk, let's disregard them being annoying for a second and talk about them and Zara. At first, they didn't regard her much at all, just another annoying cat in a group of annoying cats. But she soon came onto their radar as she was the first cat to challenge their attitude and perspective, calling them out when they were being a jerk. At first, Hornet Dusk was furious and demanded to know why Zara thought she was better than them. Zara replied that she didn't think that at all, she just knew that Hornet Dusk could work on themselves and be better. Hornet Dusk was furious at the implication of her words, and I think this may be why they confessed to Fudge twice. Maybe thinking that if someone accepted them, especially someone who used to be on the same side as them, that it meant they didn't need to change. But Fudge firmly rejected them both times, not just for their poor timing, but also because of the way they treat everyone around them. Hornet Dusk was finally shaken enough to think about their behavior, but still kept to themselves. Then, on a patrol fighting a fox, in a moment of panic, they saved Plumeria from death by yanking her back by her tail. Plumeria was thankful, and Hornet Dusk was shocked by how good it felt to help someone. On the next patrol, they ended up telling stories and actually bonding with other cats. This led to them starting to reciprocate Zara's feelings, and even some cats to start to see them as a friend. There are some cats who still don't like them and probably never will, but they're starting to understand why. Either way, they're perfectly happy right now with their bold, confident mate and their delightful litter of kits. I will say that they find Tangle Kit the most amusing, as the little kit is just as much of a handful as they were at her age. Garlic Moon is another new arrival to the clan. They were an injured loner found on a patrol, and although she was defensive at first, mainly because of Beamfog being a jerk, Buckstride was able to help her calm down and convince her that they could help. I think she was one of the first cats to befriend Hornet Dusk after joining, her first patrol being the one where they were telling stories that she happily listened to. She also was getting advice from Elmpaw, which may sound silly, but I think that the apprentice was genuinely helping her learn about clan life and was very happy that Garlic Moon took her seriously. She also talks to Zara a lot, the two of them are very good friends. She helped fight off rogues on the same patrol as Katie and First Star and her skill and bravery got her an apprentice in Swarmpaw. They get along really well and tell stories and work hard on patrols together. She's super happy with her apprentice and hopes the cat will grow into a fine warrior, and she's sure she'll learn plenty along the way as well. Plumeria is up next and had a very great start to the year when a falling branch landed on her tail. Oops. She grumbled a lot, but eventually her tail managed to heal and she was free to escape the medicine den and cause trouble. She may have been a little too excited to get out there though, because the first patrol she went on after that was when she was a little too intent on winning a fight with a fox and would have been caught in its jaws if it weren't for Hornet Dusk's surprisingly selfless actions. After that, she was one of the first cats besides Zara and Garlic Moon to open up to them, happily telling extremely ridiculous stories alongside theirs to make the patrol laugh. Later on, she was also getting advice from Weed Pelt, which I think may have been about her desire for a family. Romance isn't something she's interested in, but having kits is, and she really wants that, but isn't sure of how to get there without a mate. She's trying not to focus on that though, instead lightening the mood with her shenanigans. And with all the kits right now, she's always down to babysit. She even managed to catch some chickens alongside Ragged and Hazelstorm, a catch they were super proud of. And although some cats are still a little annoyed at her for putting a dead snake in camp as a prank, totally a prank, all in all, Plumeria is a cat everyone can look to when they're in need of a laugh. She's happy to be that for her clanmates, but just like last year, she still longs for a family of her own and is saddened that it still hasn't happened. I really hope this goofy cat can have kids someday, mainly because I want to see what her little terrors would grow up to be. Hatch Fox is next, and it may not surprise you to hear that he is still not doing good. He recovered from White Cough and still has been snappy with just about everyone, even refusing to patrol with his niece, Greenpaw, and telling his mother to focus on patrol when she was just trying to tell a story. 
Despite his strictness, he was caught sharing prey with the rogue on patrol, so I'm not sure if that was a cat he's secretly meeting or if he was just helping them out. Only time will tell. He immediately got heat stroke in the summer from overworking himself, and even when sick was chastising clanmates, but no one was sure what for. He did manage to save Shivering Kit from a river, which Buckstride was extremely relieved about, but I couldn't help but would be worried. Hatchfox is definitely the type of cat to throw himself into danger without thinking about his own health, a trait he very much shares with his mom. Oh, and also he may have saved Shivering Kit, but he doesn't like them, as the kit was teasing them for days just to be a little jerk. He was on the patrol where Aldercall was injured and berated himself harshly for the mistake, even when Aldercall pointed out that it was really no one's fault. At the end of the year, he was given an apprentice in Stoatpaw, which I think was once again First Star trying to stop him from overworking himself. Unfortunately, their first patrol didn't exactly go well, so they haven't bonded much yet. We need to get him to go look like a hot spring or something. He's so stressed all the time. I just wish this poor cat could relax. Hazelstorm is next, and his year has not been great. He was refusing to follow Conquer Skip's orders at one point, which made Burnet Shade disappointed with him in Star Clan. But he did have a run-in with the Rebel Clan patrol, where they shared a respectful nod with each other. I think he very much respects that clan for coming to aid Root Clan, even if it was against them. Plus, he imagines that they must be very close to Star Clan all the way up on the mountain. Unfortunately, the rest of the year was spent in the medicine den as he was accidentally caught in a two-leg trap and his leg was heavily injured. I think it may have been caused by Hush Star maybe leading him there or tricking him into following what he thought was a Star Clan cat, because Hush Star was watching him with a sly smile while he recovered. Eventually he healed, but his leg will never be the same. He prayed to Star Clan for guidance a lot, uncertain of what to do. He also argued with Golden Stripe quite a bit for how the cat was ignoring his daughter, and is annoyed at Hatchfox for snapping at cats, especially their mother. Eventually he got used to walking with only one back leg and was able to catch those chickens, an achievement he was also very proud of. He managed to confront a rogue and intimidated them into leaving all on his own. At the end of the year, despite some joint pain, he's doing a lot better and is keeping a close eye on the leader's den, hoping his mother will be okay, and also on his kits, who he is encouraging in everything they do. Beam Fog is next, and his year is not good. First things first, he and Buckstride broke up. It was a long time coming, honestly, they weren't good together. And Beam Fog's temper wasn't good for any cat around him. A big part of their breakup was Shivering Kit, as Beamfog didn't think that adopting him was a good idea and thought Buckstride was being stupid and reckless and not thinking. Since the breakup, he has been a bit reckless himself, and even more snappy than usual somehow, including diving headfirst into a badger den and barely escaping before he was attacked by it. He even started a fight with some of his clanmates, most likely about how he fought rogues with a little too much violence when they attacked his patrol. He just continues to not learn his lesson or think about his actions, as he also dove into another badger den and had the same thing happen. What did you think was going to happen, Beamfog? But the true catalyst at the end of the year was the loss of his mother, Dove Prance. He didn't want to believe her in her Star Clan dream, only forced to when Flower Patch's wails of despair hit his ears. He doesn't know how to handle the sadness when he's held on to anger for so long. He's been a mess, staring off into space and struggling to even patrol. He does want to reach back out to Flower Patch and his little siblings for any sort of comfort, but there's still lingering anger and guilt, especially towards his siblings who barely even know him since he never tried to get close to them. He can't bring himself to do it and instead has been wandering outside the territory, visiting old places he and Dove Prance used to stay when they were exiled, and thinking about all the happy times they had together. He wishes he could go back to those days when everything felt simpler. Buckstride is up next and compared to his ex-mate, he's had a far better year. He was able to smooth things over after the rabbit incident I mentioned before and was on the same patrol as Conquer Skip that was hissed and jeered at by Mist Clan. I think that despite facing them confidently, he is a bit worried about the possibility of a war in the future. He remembers the last one far too well, especially the loss of his brother. This worry is why he adopted young Shivering Kit. The similarities were far too striking. He swore to the young Kit that he would keep them safe and did his best to shield them from the argument with Beamfog. He does his best as a father, but he doesn't exactly have a good blueprint to work off of with Berlioz as his dad. But thankfully, his big brother Daisy Spike is always willing to give advice. He was proud of his kit for wanting to become a healer, but definitely worries about his attitude and how he always seems to be tired, like he's not getting enough sleep. But unlike many other cats, Buckstride has never really come into contact with the Dark Forest, so I don't think he even knows what his son has gotten himself into. Beyond his new kiddo, he also gained another apprentice in Brindlepaw. 
The young kit didn't have patrols for a while due to heat exhaustion, but once Brindlepa healed, he has been working on trying to help her with her anxiety. But it's been tough going. They've had a lot of unlucky patrols. Still, she managed very well after a time, and he yelled proudly at her ceremony. He's also become pretty good friends with Hatchfox and Cricket Pelt. Hatchfox for saving his son, and Cricket Pelt for being the friendly goofball he needed after the breakup. All in all, despite some worries for the future, he's content and proud of himself for how far he's come. Golden Stripe is next, and his year is, as you would expect, not good. He was having a wonderful year until, on a patrol with Greenpaw and Acacia, his mate sacrificed herself to save Greenpaw from two legs. He was taken instead, and though they desperately tried to follow the two legs in their monster, they couldn't keep up. Golden Stripe was heartbroken, but refused to give up. He got heat stroke the next moon, which I assume was from searching for his mate everywhere he could. After he recovered, most of his statuses had been wondering what living with two legs must be like, wondering if kitty pet life is really so bad, and watching kitty pets in their garden. He disappeared for days at a time to search nearby two leg place homes, and has kind of been ignoring a lot of things, including his apprentice, Greenpaw. He was assigned to complete her training until Acacia returned, if she returned, and hasn't really been focusing on her. I think part of him blames her, and feels guilty for thinking that. He knows it wasn't really her fault, but he can't bring himself to train her while well, he, he knows that Acacia could still be out there. He was also on a patrol that found a dead kitty pet next to the Thunderpath, which only worried him more, wondering if it was a Star Clan omen. After all the loss he's dealt with, he really isn't taking this well and doesn't know how much more he can take. Considering Russadon wants to warn him about something, I'm a little worried about what that could mean. Flood is next, and unfortunately he hasn't been up to much this year, and what he has done has been kinda sad. He and Sorrelback were actually falling in love, and it was really sweet, which made it even more horrifying when he, the only other one on the patrol, could do nothing but watch as the coyote killed Sorrelback before he could even react. He was horrified and could only run away, feeling horribly guilty, which was only made worse when Sapling Crest screamed at him that if he had really loved her brother, Hayflood would have saved him. He's been really shaken, to the point of nearly getting lost near two leg nests. He was also on the patrol with Golden Stripe that found the dead kitty pet, which only brought up terrible memories for him. But he was the one that found Comfrey Fluff and has been visiting her often and fretting over her a lot. I think rescuing her helped a little with the guilt he had and the thoughtful cat was able to get him to vent and express his sadness better. He's been a little more confident since then, with successful hunting patrols and even fighting off a gang of rogues with some other cats. He's happy to see light in his life again, but his heart still aches a lot. He thinks about Sorrelback nearly every day and prays the cat is safe in Star Clan. Rivergrove is next, and she's doing far better this year. Right away, you'll probably notice that she has three beautiful kits, Ice Kit, Lavender Kit, and Dazzle Kit. The beginning of the year was a bit rough for her, as she also got unlucky with falling trees and got her tail injured. After she recovered from both that and her grief, she was a little out of it, her heart aching. She would wander and almost get lost near two-leg homes. She started to cheer up thanks to some of the kits, who her shenanigans helped cheer up as well, especially the more nervous ones. She found her stride and even managed to chase off some rogues. Some of her antics did get her lectured by the deputy, but she took it in stride. Then one day she suddenly announced she was expecting kits, and two moons later these three were the newest members of the clan. She has refused to talk about their origins, but the clan says they're half-clan, so that's interesting. Right now, she's the happiest she's ever been, playing with her kits all the time and spoiling them rotten. She is happy to see that her mother is smiling again, too, especially with her new grandkits. And she was also quite surprised with something Fudge told her, but more on that later. Sapling Crest and Oakleaf are up next. Yep, the mean lesbians got together. <laughs> Let's start with Oakleaf and what she's been up to. She managed to get over her shock of witnessing Vine Gale's death, but still has had a lot of trouble connecting with cats. Eventually, she found a friend in her cousin, Fickle Feather and Cricket Stock, and found a lot of happiness in taking care of the kits, including theatrically dying after one of the kits slayed her while she was pretending to be an evil monster. She was uncertain about her dad's now two mates, and made sure to threaten both of them, not to hurt her father or face the wrath of her claws. Eventually, Sapling Crest started to join their patrols, and although Oakleaf was already her friend, this was when the crush started to develop. She even played a prank on her. Definitely the only cat that Sapling Crest would allow to do that. She also got an apprentice in Zinyapa, but the troublesome kit was a bit annoying to deal with at first. Thankfully, she managed to find a rhythm with them eventually. It helped that a lot of the cats in her age range are similarly troublesome. She's used to it. 
Eventually, she and Sapling Crest became mates, and she couldn't be happier. Except for, she is very worried about Sapling Crest right now. Sorrelback's death hurt her mate a lot, but she can't help but feel like there's something else going on. And there is. But let's talk about the rest of the year first. Sapling Crest was initially still hostile and snippy at the beginning of the year, but actually managed to start making more friends after a patrol with Ficklefeather, who taught her, Oakleaf, and other cats on the patrol all the tips for fishing. Sapling Crest never really apologized for bullying her, she just sort of started being nicer. She still teases her, but it's more of a joking thing than anything else. I think this was probably because Oakleaf really loves her cousin and was protective of her and made sure Sapling knew that. They did grow up together after all. Unfortunately, tragedy struck partway through the year as her brother was killed by the coyotes. They never really repaired their relationship with each other as they grew up, but she was still heartbroken and held a lot of guilt for not being there. She yelled at Hayflood even though she knew it wasn't his fault and snapped at their father for seemingly moving on too quickly. She was inconsolable. And then as if that wasn't enough, she was pulled into the dark forest, meeting Cliff Dazzle in the shadowy place. She refused Cliff Dazzle's offer for training, smart enough to know it was dangerous. But now her dreams are constant torment, with both Hush Star and Hush Whisper invading her dreams, whispering in her ears, appearing in front of her. She has nightmares where she's chased and swiped at. She's exhausted and can't seem to rest. Oakleaf can tell something is happening, but Sapling Crest just puts on a smile and says she's fine. She's scared of putting any more loved ones in danger and will keep it all to herself if it means they aren't hurt. But, unknown to her, Sorrelback is watching from Star Clan and not planning to let the cruel cats hurt his family any more than they already have. Cricket Stock is up next, and he's had a pretty good year. Not only did he manage to take on a fox, but he also seemed to have some connections with Star Clan. Olive Blaze was walking in his dreams, which I'm curious what that could have been about. Beyond that, he has been his usual playful self and has been the encouragement his sister needed as she tried to reach out and make friends. He did get heat stroke and a dislocated joint, but bounced back from both injuries quickly and without losing his chipper attitude. He also fought off a gang of rogues with cats at the end of the year, including his sister. That's really all he's been up to this year, but beyond that, he's definitely a bit more worried about his father, and especially his grandmother. He may or may not be harboring a crush on a certain buckstride, too. But, despite teasing his sister for her current crush, he can't bring himself to even mention his own. Mainly because he knows buckstride just got out of a relationship, and he doesn't want to be pushy. For now, he's happy with patrolling together and chatting whenever they can. Ficklefeather is up next, and she's doing far better than last year. She was still a little shy and awkward at the beginning of the year, but found herself starting to reach out with encouragement from her cousins and brother. And not only that, but Billowhowl reached out to her all by herself. Ficklefeather was surprised, as she doesn't really see herself as someone worth befriending, but Billowhowl denied such a thing and continued to encourage her. It was thanks to her and her family that she used the knowledge of fishing passed down by her mentor Katie and taught them all how to swim and catch fish. Sapling Crest even complimented her on her skills, which she realized was probably the closest thing she was going to get to an apology. But they actually bonded from there and seem to be pretty good friends now and even told stories together on patrol. She also likes to tell stories to the apprentices. As of the end of the year, she's feeling a lot more confident with her new friends and is hoping to confess to her crush soon. But she is still harboring her dark forest secret. She dreams of it a lot and wanders through the forest quietly. She's practically an expert at sneaking through it now. She avoids cats when she sees them, though, remembering the warnings of the older cats, especially her father's. However, on days where she sleeps soundly, she's noticed that she has strange dreams where a familiar black-and-white cat is trying to reach out to her, but always fails to reach her before she wakes up. She isn't sure what to make of that. Aphid Glint is up next, and she's honestly kind of been a punk this year. She was annoyed by the kits pretty much all year, wanting them to play more quietly, and was bragging about how well her patrols were run, even though they hadn't had a single success that year yet? Girly? She did manage to get an apprentice in Jumblepaw, but they didn't exactly get along. Aphid Glint thought very highly of herself and her ideas for teaching, and got very irritated whenever Jumblepaw tried to challenge her, even when Jumblepaw was right. She is a pretty good hunter, and has come up with good plans to catch squirrels and other animals. She also was on a patrol that chased off a fox and helped fight off some rogues at the end of the year. That power definitely went into her head. I think she's slowly turning into one of those holier-than-thou kind of cats, thinking she's better than others just because of her skill. At least in the other parts of her life, too, such as the dark forest that she wanders in. She is far less careful than her cousin Ficklefeather, and has started speaking to some of the dark forest cats, as she doesn't think they have the power to hurt her. 
When Ficklefeather, who spotted her there, tried to warn her to be careful, she just snapped that just because Ficklefeather is weak doesn't mean Aphidglint is as well, and she can handle herself. At the end of the year, she's also worried about her adoptive mother, Firstar, and is frustrated that Weedpelt won't let her or her father visit. But for Aphid Glint, this translates into anger, an anger that makes her lash out at others since she doesn't really have any friends. I really hope she'll let someone in, this anger isn't good for her, especially with the dark forest in her ears. Brightbone is up next, and she's now a full warrior. She was honored for her planning and feels quite a bit more confident in herself now that she's a full warrior. It feels really nice to not have her judgmental mentor constantly watching her every move. She feels like she isn't about to make stupid mistakes all the time, but when she does, she's still thoroughly embarrassed and feels like a kit all over again. Surprisingly, though, she does have deputy goals and really wants an apprentice because of that. She is also the closest of her siblings with Shivering Paw, as they like to play pranks on each other all the time. She's one of the only people he doesn't talk down to as if he's better than her, but he hasn't told her about Berlioz at all, and she has no reason to suspect anything. She also was a shoulder for Hayflood to cry on, and, despite her nervousness, was quick to snarl at Sapling Crest when the cat yelled at her brother for not saving Sorrel back. Sapling Crest eventually apologized to her, but Brightbone was quick to say that while she appreciated it, Hayflood was the one who deserved an apology. Interestingly enough, she actually does harbor a pretty big crush for Sapling Crest. It isn't reciprocated right now, but I think Sapling Crest's improving behavior had to do with it, and the fact they've been patrolling together since the incident. She has also noticed Sapling Crest's exhaustion and sudden jumpy nature, but isn't sure how to help. She thinks it's simply nightmares and is trying to get the cat to eat and rest, and asks her father often about what herbs the cat could have to help sleep soundly. She is definitely the type of cat who is loving and extremely protective of the cat she cares about, but has a hard time extending that same love to herself. I really hope she can grow even more confident of herself in the future. She deserves it. Billow Howl is next, and this goofy girl has my whole heart. Just like last year, she is a very friendly and excitable cat who is always willing to make new friends and reach out to any shy cats. Fittingly enough, she was honored for her openness at her warrior ceremony. Considering her friendship with Cricketstock, I think she asked the cat if Ficklefeather would ever want to hang out, and when Cricketstock said he was sure that she did but she was too anxious to ask, Billow Howl took the first step and reached out. I think she actually fell in love first, especially if she watched Ficklefeather come out of her shell more and more. She was in awe of the cat's fishing and swimming skills, and then she noticed how much Ficklefeather loves to swim, and she started inviting her to go swim in the river all the time. She's definitely one of the few cats who can tell how Fickle is feeling despite her quiet demeanor, and endures the fluffy cat's shy smiles. Beyond her crush, Billow Hell has also been very busy on patrols. After a very reckless run-in with the badger, she's gotten better, but that still scared me. She got lost in a storm, and I thought she was dead, but thankfully she just spotted an owl to catch, and the clan was able to catch it. Please stop scaring me, Billow Howl. She ended up getting her first apprentice in Cocopaw, who was just as excited as her. Her and Cocopaw get along really well, and every patrol, even when they fail, is okay, because Billow Howl is a very positive cat. She also loves her new little siblings and spoils them and plays with them all the time. And though the loss of Petal Kit hurt, she tries to stay positive and sends a prayer to StarClan for her every day. She's also very excited for her adoptive parent and Rue Climb to have another kit, ready for a new little sibling she can spoil. She wonders if maybe one day she and Ficklefeather could have a family of their own, but they've gotta confess first for that to happen. Green Thunder is next, and as you've probably heard based on everything above, she's not having a good year. She was a little too reckless around two legs, and thanks to that, she lost her beloved mentor and was neglected by her new one. Despite the adults around her being furious and insisting she didn't deserve it, she felt like she did. If it wasn't for her, Acacia would still be around after all. She was caught trying to sneak out of camp the moon after Acacia was lost, and eventually did manage to escape to search for her mentor, but didn't find anything. Feeling useless, she pushed herself into working harder, working on her hunting skills, especially tracking. She gained her warrior name and was honored for her vigilance, but she wasn't even sure if she deserved to become a warrior when all she manages to do is mess things up. Even when she does succeed, she just thinks she got lucky. Fellow Howl, her father, and her siblings try to encourage her, but it's hard for Green Thunder to believe it. In an attempt to help her confidence, Conquer Skip and First Star agreed to give her Yellow Paw as an apprentice. Conquer Skip claimed she was a good choice, but she didn't feel like she was. After a messy patrol, she also caught White Cough and is now in the medicine den. She feels like even Star Clan is against her in telling her she's useless, and she isn't sure if she could ever be good at anything. 
Jumble Talon is up next, and despite her nervousness, she is a very happy cat this year. She was apprenticed to Aphid Glint and was wanting to practice her battle moves right away, but when they went training, they got into a pretty big argument about the technique. Considering Aphid Glint's attitude, I think she wasn't walking through her battle moves well enough for her blind apprentice to follow, and refused to explain herself further, expecting Jumble Paw to just figure it out. Eventually, Aphid Glint declared that she wouldn't teach them again until they apologized, which Jumble Paw refused to do. Conquer Skip ordered them to patrol anyway, wanting them to learn to get along. Jumble Paw was able to break the awkward atmosphere with a Root Clan patrol by telling a story, and was pretty smug afterwards since Aphid Glint and Conquer Skip were both there, so Aphid Glint's claims that she wasn't trying were now wrong. <laughs> Aphid Glint begrudgingly apologized after that, and they managed to get along eventually. <laughs> Jumble Paw has also made a great friend in Yellow Paw, each of them pranking each other back and forth. She also had a pretty great friend in Cherry Paw, the goofy cat is always someone who can make her laugh. At her warrior ceremony, she was honored for her prudence, and was very quickly given her own apprentice in Dusk Paw. The apprentice is eager to learn, and Jumble Talon is eager to teach, especially now that she knows exactly what not to do. <laughs> Brindle Growl is right after her sister and has had a busy year as well. I think her anxiety is a bit worse than her sister's as she's always been far more jumpy. She was apprenticed to Buckstride and was secretly kind of relieved when she got heat exhaustion. Not that Buckstride was a bad mentor, but Brindlepaw was terrified of messing up on her first patrol. Much to her embarrassment, she kinda did, being startled by a squirrel so badly that she leapt several feet into the air. But to her relief, Buckstride didn't laugh, instead simply teaching her how to be more aware of her surroundings. She really looked up to her mentor a lot, but that didn't stop her nerves from getting the better of her, especially after two patrols in a row where they spotted wolves. Both times, Brindlepaw was so scared she ran away instantly and felt embarrassed all over again. But once again, her mentor and family encouraged her, and she finally found her bravery when she suggested a badger stakeout, which ended up being a success. She was super proud. And then on the next patrol immediately accidentally followed her own paw prints. Beamfog was super harsh at her for such a mistake, and she turned out to have the same pettiness as her sister, immediately pranking Beamfog next moon, which I imagine made it very hard for Buckstride not to laugh, considering this was post-breakup. She was honored for her realism at her ceremony, and was very relieved when it was over, not wanting another ceremony ever again. Unfortunately, after a few successful patrols, her leg got caught in a two-leg trap and was heavily injured. She's ending the year still injured with an infection in her leg. She's trying her best to pretend she's fine, not wanting to ruin her family's happiness, but they all see through it. However, they all know that she will feel guilty for burdening them if they tell her that, so they do their best to spend as much time with her as they can, with happy stories and chatter. I really hope she recovers next year and gets some confidence. The poor girl deserves that much. Elm Bramble and Zinnia Paw are next, and unfortunately, much like the rest of their family, the end of the year has been a heartbreaking one. But let's back up a bit and talk about their years from the beginning. Starting with Elm Bramble, who was a bit of a bully as a kid, jealous of having attention taken away from her by a new little sibling. However, she was eventually taken to the medicine den for a bit after having bad sneezing fits for ages. It turns out she has pretty bad allergies and gets sneezing fits a lot. Little Zinnia Kit stayed with her the entire time, worried about his big sister, despite her attitude towards him. It melted the jealousy, and as she got used to dealing with her allergies, they quickly became thick as thieves. They're basically twins. They were both little troublemakers and drove some of the more strict cats crazy. She was apprenticed to Sporefrost and was a very sneaky apprentice because when she noticed that Sporefrost was absolutely crushing on Tigersaur and Katie, she waited until the two were going on an herb gathering patrol and loudly declared they were coming too so she could learn about her mommy's work. Sporefrost realized after a while exactly what she did and was honestly pretty impressed because she worked very hard on the patrol just to help him out. She is quite the prankster, but is always willing to help out the other cats around her, and even more willing to learn, especially from cats even sneakier than her, like Cricket Stock. She was honored at her warrior ceremony for her determination. She's also a strange dreamer, having been visited by several StarClan cats, which is why I think when Dove Prince told them she knew she would be leaving for StarClan soon, Elm Pramble took it the easiest, because she'd known as well. It still hurt her a lot, especially when the death actually happened, but she never was in denial like the others. She struggled on patrols since the death, mainly due to her worry over her brother and mother, especially wishing she could help ease their pain, as maybe it would help ease her own as well. As for Zinnyapa, he was initially having a very wonderful year. As a kid, he was an absolute creature, especially as he and his older sister started to get along. He was trying to sneak out of camp, kept trying to steal herbs from the medicine den, and got in a lot of trouble for pranking Petal Kit at one point. 
He was apprenticed to Oakleaf and was hoping she would be a cool mentor, but she's actually very strict, which he took as a challenge to be even more of a menace. He was told off several times by her for not taking his training seriously enough, which didn't work at all. Eventually, they did manage to find a rhythm after a fight with a large dog, where he got in the way trying to protect others and nearly got badly hurt. Oakleaf gave him a far gentler lecture, explaining that this was why their training needed to be taken seriously, because it could save your life. He was far more attentive after that, but still found plenty of time to goof off. They even got to take some lost kits back to Rebel Clan together. Unfortunately, he caught Yellowcoff near the end of the year, which is why he's still an apprentice despite his age. He isn't exactly focused on that right now, obviously, as he has been mourning over his mother, Dove Prance, and has had a very hard time with it. He looks a lot like her, and it hurts him to see the similarities and be reminded that she isn't here anymore. He and Elm Bramble have been each other's rocks during this time, and are doing their best to keep each other's heads out during this. However, Zinyapa is also worried about Beamfog. Although their eldest brother never spent much time with them at all, he knows from Dove Prince's stories how much love he shared for his mother. He wants to reach out and offer comfort, but he isn't sure if Beamfog would accept it, or if he could even say the right thing when they barely know each other. He just wants what's left of the family to stick together, like Dove Prince would have wanted. Cherry Paw and Coco Paw are next, and these two are first star in Willow Thrift's litter. These two are absolutely adorable, even if Cherry Paw is a little bit of a menace. They're also very close to each other, practically glued to the hip, siblings and besties. I even got to do their bonus drawing together because they had a patrol with their mentors where they were all jumping in a leaf pile and play fighting. Absolutely adorable. Let's go into a bit more detail, starting with Cherry Paw. From their kit hood, they were a troublemaker, trying to climb as high as they could only to be caught by Billow Howl and several others each time. He was apprenticed to Root Climb, and although they had a very cute first patrol with the leaves, like I said, his second patrol was catching a rabbit on Miss Clan Border and getting chased back over it with hisses and yowls. He's definitely a cat who doesn't think before he acts sometimes. But he does have some pretty great friends. He and Jumble Talon get along really well, and he and Shivering Paw are... Not exactly friends, more like rivals. They had a competition once to see who could gather herbs the fastest, and both of them insist they were the winners. In comparison to her brother, Coco Paw is a little angel. She definitely inherited her dad's calmness and her mother's kind-hearted nature. Despite this, she was absolutely down to tag along with her brother's antics, even coming up with plans to sneak out of camp. She was apprenticed to Billow Howl and adored her new mentor. Billow Howl's positive attitude is very infectious and makes Coco Paw very confident and helps her realize it's okay to fail as long as she tries again. This confidence even helped her chase off a fox from a patrol, something she has to resist bragging about. She did fall into a river, after which I think her mentor took her to Fickle Feather to learn more about swimming, and Kokopa is very aware that they are crushing hard on each other, and tries to find ways to get them to hang out so they can realize it and admit it. <laughs> Both of them are also worried about their mom, especially since they aren't allowed to see her right now. Cherry Paw wants to sneak in, but Kokopa is smart enough to realize that if they aren't allowed in, it's probably for a good reason. They've settled instead for helping the medicine cats and their older siblings leave stuff like moss, prey, and herbs at the entrance of the den, and wait anxiously to hear for news about their mother. These two absolutely have my heart, and I can't wait to see more from them next year. Sleek Paw, Dusk Paw, Yellow Paw, and Swarm Paw are up next, and these four are the surviving kits of Conquer Skip's surprise litter. I split them up into two different photos because I've learned my lesson from Sweets, Kits, and Rebel Clan, so let's start by talking about Sleek Paw. Sleek Paw reminds me a lot of Brindle Growl, except he's even more nervous than her, somehow. Even as a kit, he was asking older cats if it was safe, and squeaked with nervousness when his mentor was announced at a ceremony. I think Conquer Skip and First Star both agreed on Ragged as his mentor, because the cat knows how well to handle that due to his two anxious kiddos. Unfortunately, they haven't had much luck. Their first patrol was one where Beamfog ran into a badger hole and they all had to run to escape it, and their other notable patrol was one that both Sleekpaw and his brother Yellowpaw were on where Danger Pelt caught the rabbit on another clan's borders. Considering their young age, I like to think both of them were very much like, oh, you broke a rule! Other than that, he hasn't had a chance to show more of his personality. I hope we can see more of him next year, especially a little bit of bravery. In wild difference to Sleekpaw, Duskpaw is a wild, bold young cat who is ready for just about anything. He was also tumbling and getting into scrapes as a kit, and even got heat exhaustion because he just refused to settle down. Thankfully, he recovered and was apprenticed to Jumble Talon, a cat he really looked up to. Though they have just started training, Jumble Talon was very helpful in teaching Duskpaw to be more cautious. That didn't stop him and his brother Swarmpaw from launching at a fox, though, with Duskpaw biting its neck and taking it down. This little guy is a wild child, and I'm absolutely here for it. On to the next photo, we have Yellowpaw. 
He's lonesome and a bit more on the quiet side compared to his other siblings. He likes his alone time, but also enjoys it when older warriors would agree to play games. He was apprenticed to Green Thunder, but feels a little insecure about it because of Green Thunder's behavior. Their first messy patrol was actually the same as Sleek Paws, who I think Yellowpaw tends to be protective over. After her mentor got White Cough, he's asked to be on the same patrols as Sleek Paw, which is how he also saw Danger Pelt catch the rabbit. He also gave the laurels to Daisy Spike, who is a doting grandparent to him. That's pretty much it for Yellowpaw, but I do hope we get to see them step out of their shell more next year. Last of the siblings is Swarmpaw, who is an absolute sweetheart of a cat. He was a bit of a sickly kit, getting heat exhaustion and bad headaches, which really worried Conquer Skip after they lost Petal Kit, so I think they were a bit more coddled than their siblings. But he never acted spoiled, only ever bringing out the puppy dog eyes when he really wanted someone to play with him and his brothers. He loved to hear stories and come up with his own, and followed the medicine cats around a lot. I actually thought he would become a medicine cat, but he decided on a warrior. Turns out he's pretty good at it, considering he helped Duskpaw take down a fox. I think he's definitely the type of cat who seems like he wouldn't hurt a fly, but will absolutely destroy anyone who dares to put his family in danger. I'm excited to see more of these siblings next year. Our last apprentice of the year is a new face, Stoatpaw. She's a long, tiny little kitten who looks like a stoat, hence the name. She's actually a surprise kit from Civet Stripe, who brought her to the clan a little while after Sorrelback's death. That was why Sapling Crest was yelling at her dad, accusing him of replacing Sorrel back and moving on too quickly, which unfortunately Stoke Kit overheard, and was heartbroken that her big sister her dad told her about didn't want anything to do with her. Which is why I think she's responsible despite her young age, constantly compared to a cat she doesn't know by her sister. She feels a need to prove herself and was thinking of ways to help the clan when she was apprenticed to Hash Fox. Unfortunately, their first patrol didn't go well, because she was actually quite distracted by Duskpaw. Considering her personality, I don't think she was goofing off, but that she's actually crushing pretty hard on Duskpaw and thinks he's really cool, which makes it very hard for her to focus around him. That's all we have on her this year, but I really hope next year will be nicer to her. I hope she and Sapling Chris can bond, and I hope Stoatpaw will realize she doesn't need to prove anything to anyone and allow herself to actually be herself. But only time will tell. On to Civet Stripe, this cat has ended the year on an alright note. In the beginning of the year, he was his usual self, telling stories and relaxing in his retirement, but Partridge Snaps and Sorrelback's death hit him hard. He sat all night at Partridge Snaps' vigil in silence and slipped out of camp constantly to visit Sorrelback's grave. He was in a daze after a while, which I think is what led him to find comfort outside the clan, and boy was he surprised to have another kid at his age. He was very frustrated and worried about Sapling Crest. Her words hurt, but he can also easily tell that something is wrong, and is unsure of how to help when she won't open up to him. He's focused more of his efforts on Stoatpaw, especially after he realized that she heard everything. He tried to get her to play and join in on pranks, but she insisted on being mature and responsible, which broke his heart. However, he is hopeful after hearing about her first patrol. He doesn't want her to goof off all the time, but her crush on Duskpaw makes him hope that she may make friends. Maybe friends who can help her open up and be herself. Beyond this worry and love for his daughters, he's also been there for the last cat in the clan, Fudge. She's doing way better than last year. She still misses Vinegale every day, but River Grove has helped her heal, and her new grandkits definitely help keep her mind off of the sadness. She spoils them rotten and loves telling them stories. They're so adorable, and she can't wait to see them grow up. As for her romantic life, well, she's definitely not happy with Hornet Dusk after what they did, but she is happy to see them moving on and actually improving their behavior, which she thinks took way too long, but whatever. She prefers being acquaintances and nothing more. And it may also be because this old lady is expecting another litter of kits. I'm genuinely surprised, and also definitely am turning off that unknown second parent thing, probably for good, or at least for a little while. Too many cats, too many kits. But alright, Fudge, you win this round. She's expecting a large litter and will be having them at the beginning of next year, which she's very happily looking forward to, so we'll see how that goes. Sounds like we may be getting another kitten boom. Oh god. That is all of the cats in Hound Clan this year, but we still have to talk about the other clans, don't we? You all know how Rebel Clan is doing, so let's talk about the other two together, and kind of draw them in maybe some similar positions, partly to save on time, but also because Root Clan and Miss Clan went to war? That's right. The tension between these two clans finally went over the boiling point and battles have been raging on both sides, in both files actually. There was also a murder in Root Clan, but the only cat who knows about it was the murderer who also died like a moon later, so uh, let's forget about that, let's focus on the cats.
Ginger Star is furious, especially because Mist Clan was the one to attack first. He has been intensely protecting his clan, refusing to back down like they did to Hound Clan when it was ruled by Hush Star, especially when the tragedies they faced this year with many cats dying or going missing. He refused to let this war take anyone else away, especially now that he has a mate and three kits of his own to keep safe. Deputy-wise, we still have Wiggle Strike as well, who is struggling not to give in to the anger and rage they felt during the Battle of Hound Clan. He doesn't want to kill anyone, especially after the incident with Cosmos Fern, but if Miss Clan tries anything close to an invasion, he will do whatever it takes to keep Root Clan from being thrown into more turmoil. All in all, he's just tired. As for Medicine Cats in Root Clan, Juniper Petal has retired once more, now that there is more than one healer. Now we have Bow Meadow, who is struggling with several responsibilities, not just the war, but also his newborn kits, and trying to keep his brother, Ginger Star, from pushing himself too far. We also have Song Fur, Juniper Petal's apprentice, who, after hearing stories of her adoptive sister Puddle Honey, decided to become a medicine cat, and Rypaw, Wiggle Strike's daughter, who chose to follow in the ways of a medicine cat instead of fighting after witnessing the horrors of war at a far too young age. In Mist Clan, Flower Star is still just as stressed and exhausted as last year, and was furious at her warriors for pushing the war into happening. Her clan is starting to see her as weak for wanting to surrender or make peace, claiming that she's going to run away just like Snail Star did. It's only thanks to her deputy they listen to her at all, but she isn't sure what else she can do and nobody will even listen to her. She never wanted any of this. As for deputies, we still have Sweet Wisp, whose shameless attitude is the only thing keeping Flower Star from losing complete control of the clan. She yells at cats who call for more violence and is trying her best to get her clanmates to realize just how dangerous what they're doing is. But she is being constantly challenged by a newcomer to the clan named Jagged and his mate, Dark Pelt, who constantly undermine her and Flower Star's words and orders. She doesn't trust them at all and believes they may have an underlying motive for what they're doing. As for Medicine Cats, unfortunately Buzzard froze to death while searching for herbs. That leaves Pullback and Midge Swarm as the only Medicine Cats in the clan, although they do have their eyes on a possible apprentice. They're both extremely exhausted right now, with cats constantly demanding to know if Star Clan has spoken to them, only to snap at them when they reveal that Star Clan is against the bloodshed. They hiss at Midge Swarm especially because Flower Star is her mother. That, combined with the unrest and the constant injuries, has left them both on edge, especially Pullback, who is very distrustful of Jagged, because Sweet Wisp is his sister, and he doesn't like the look in the supposedly loyal cat's eye. And, strangely enough, Miss Clan actually has two mediators right now, Fogfoot, who I don't know whether to trust or not, because his sister is Dark Pelt, and he cares about her a lot, because they are the only survivors of their litter. But he also has dislike for Jagged. I think he's trying to steer her in a better direction, but not with much success. And we have his apprentice, Cinder Creek, who unfortunately isn't faring much better. Trying to resolve conflicts in such a hostile environment has only made her doubt herself even more. And she's not sure she's capable of accomplishing anything. She respects the leader and deputy, but doesn't know if their choices are the best. She's really uncertain about what any of them are supposed to do in this situation. And that's all we have for this year. There's a lot of chaos all over the place. I'm worried Hound Clan may get pulled back into a fight sooner than they would like, especially with how aggressive Miss Clan is getting. I also really don't trust Jagged. I don't know what he's up to, but I don't trust him at all. I will say that the next year of Hound Clan may take a while to come out because I might be making another animatic for that year and doing a lot of behind the scenes stuff. This has actually been a few months in the making and I will warn you, based on my future knowledge, stuff's about to go down. But that's all you're getting from me on what's happening in year 5. I will leave you with that ominous warning. The next clan gen video will still be year 5 of Rebel Clan, so look out for that. If you enjoyed, comment and let me know, I love to read them. And make sure to check out the family tree as well, it was a lot of fun to set up. Who are your favorite cats? Any name ideas for the apprentices? Also, do you want me to see if I can figure out who the parents are for the half-clan cats in the clans? Because I have a few ideas. Let me know for any of those questions. Until next time, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing. Remember to take care of yourselves, prepare for your five, and have a good day.